This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Good evening, I'm Camilia and this is Kini News. The MACC investigation into former Finance Minister Daim Zainuddin was back in the headlines today, with MACC Chief Azambaki saying that the agency had received the green light from the Attorney General's chambers to charge him in court under the MACC Act last week. However, he said they were unable to proceed with the prosecution as Daim had been in a hospital for unspecified health reasons. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, Azam expressed his disappointment over Daim's doctor's alleged failure to be upfront with the MACC investigating officer on why the retired politician was deemed unfit to be present at court. He said when the investigating officer notified his lawyer that Daim needed to be present in court, the counsel informed the MACC that Daim had been admitted to a private hospital. Azam added that the doctor treating Daim did not reveal why the tycoon was warded and instead gave them the runaround on his condition. He said the MACC has the option to bring the judge to the private hospital where Daim is warded for his charge to be read out. However, this would not be their first option unless the situation warrants it. Previously, the MACC had confirmed to the media that Daim was being investigated for alleged corruption and money laundering. They had also seized Ilham Tower, a high commercial value building owned by Daim and his family. They are also reportedly looking into Daim's businesses and how the corporate figure obtained all his assets. Daim and his family members turned to the civil court to halt the MACC investigation against them. In a statement responding to Azam today, Daim's wife Naima Abdul Khalid contended that the tycoon is prepared to face any criminal charge, even if it takes place in the hospital. She stressed that he was not using his hospital stay as an excuse to evade being hauled to court. She said subject to the permission of the hospital and medical team, Daim is prepared to face this political charge in the hospital itself and would leave it to Azam and the MACC to decide. Naima also rubbished Azam's claim that the anti-graft agency had notified Daim's legal team a week ago that he would be charged. She further refuted the claim that this could not be done as her husband was hospitalized. According to her, they were only told that a statement was to be recorded from Daim, and only today, reading the news reports, did she discover that Daim is to be charged. She said the insinuations being made that Daim is somehow evading being charged by getting hospitalized is false and mischievous. She added that his disparaging remarks against the dedicated and professional doctors of this hospital were also offensive. Daim's wife is also facing charges by the MACC. Yesterday, she had claimed trial to failing to abide by a MACC notice to disclose her assets. She was charged under Section 36, Bracket 2 of the MACC Act 2009 at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court. Naima was alleged to have committed the offense by giving a sworn written statement that did not comply with the MACC notice under Section 36, Bracket 1 of the MACC Act. In a press conference following the proceedings, Naima had vowed to prove her innocence in court and maintain that Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim is attempting to settle old political scores. The real crime is the coordinated plot to tarnish my husband's reputation and exact political revenge and retribution against him and our family. This one will block The real crime is the emasculation and manipulation of key national institutions such as the MACC and the AGC as weapons in a political vendetta. The real crime is the wielding of state power for personal ends and not for the benefit of the people. The real crime is targeting your political opponents with concocted charges, whilst to the outrage of an entire country, corruption charges are dropped against political cronies. Meanwhile, former Law Minister Zaid Ibrahim has taken a swipe at Section 36 of the MACC Act, saying that it lacks proper oversight and enables nosy neighbours. 
Section 36 of the Act is on the powers of the agency to obtain information and empowers the MACC commissioner and higher ranking officers within reasonable grounds and based on the investigation carried out by an MACC officer to seek a written declaration of property, income, savings, as well as assets. Zaid said the Act is their way of dealing with corruption and abuse of power. He said if you refuse to comply, you can go to jail for up to five years. Zaid said that the MACC must have reasonable grounds to warrant the application of the section. However, he said in our country, the test of whether MACC has begun an investigation and whether they have reasonable grounds to compel the issue of the notice depends on the agency. He also called for MPs to re-evaluate the law, citing the UK example in which the court, rather than the investigating authority, may compel an individual to disclose their assets. He said there must be safeguards against improper and excessive use of investigative powers and laws must always be fair and just in their application. With this, he urged MPs to have a serious look at the MACC Act in the next parliament sitting. Moving on, former Premier Dr. Mahathir Muhammad was also back in the headlines today over his remarks in a press conference. Mahathir had held the press conference on Monday over the investigation against his son Mirzan. During it, he had taken a jab at Anwar for repaying both his and Daim's help during the Port Dixon by-election in 2018 with investigations. He said they both had campaigned for Anwar, but now he wants to investigate them for wrongdoings. In a response to Mahathir's comments today, Anwar Press Secretary Azman Abidin told Malaysia Kini that Mahathir is unqualified to speak on repaying help, especially when it comes to Anwar. He claimed that Mahathir had plotted against the Pakatan Harapan chairperson as early as the first week after the coalition had formed the government in May 2018. He revealed that Mahathir had called for a meeting with Harapan's leaders, where each party president was allowed to name candidates that they felt were suitable for the cabinet. He said the condition was for each party president to hand over the candidates' names and Mahathir, as the prime minister at the time, would determine the minister's portfolio. However, he said when Mahathir announced the ministers, he named four PKR leaders who were not suggested by then PKR president Wan Aziza Wan Ibrahim. In conclusion, he claimed the Mahathir betrayed Anwar and plotted against him by appointing PKR leaders who did not agree with him. Asman did not reveal the names of the four PKR leaders Mahathir appointed. Besides that, Asman said that Mahathir had also betrayed other friends in Harapan other than Anwar and PKR after he resigned as Prime Minister without holding discussions with the Harapan leadership. He also alluded to Mahathir masterminding the Shretan move to avoid handing administrative power over to Anwar, saying that the latter was eventually betrayed by his own followers. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.